If Corsair components compose your ship, then I'm about to introduce you to the captain. Let's take a gander at the Corsair commander. Pro. Because marketing words like to ruin my rambunctious rhymes. The Corsair Commander Pro is a successor to the Corsair Commander Mini, giving you a centralized hub for all sorts of components. Out of the box, you get two RGB LED hub cables, four thermal sensors at 610mm long, four fan extension cables at 300mm long, two pieces of mounting tape, and then the head honcho himself, coming in at 133 by 69 by 15.5mm. A 465mm SATA cable powers the six four-pin fan headers, two LED headers for Corsair RGB fans or LED strips, four temperature ports for the included thermal sensors, and my favorite port, uh, part, the two internal USB headers. All this data is ferried via a single internal USB 2.0 cable measuring 440 millimeters in length. And that basically means if your motherboard skippers out on a USB 2.0 port, Corsair's got your stern covered. Setup is easy. Just plug in what you'll use, connect power and data cables, and you're ready to set sail. Figuring out the fan hub part should be a breeze. The fan controller portion is a standard four pin layout, so any three pin or four pin fans will do there. The LED headers are specific to Corsair's RGB solutions, that is, the Lighting Node Pro LED strips and the HD and SP RGB fans. While the Commander Pro effectively replaces the little node, you will still need the lighting controller for customizing your fan's appearance. The LED strips from the Lighting Node Pro and the lighting controller from Corsair's RGB fans can dock into either of the LED ports. Dock. Into the ports. Get it? And from there, the rest of the RGB chain connects as you'd expect. If you want to see how that's done in better detail, check out the video up here. All cables will only fit into their respective spots one way, so no need to worry about orientation. I plug the USB 2.0 cable from the Corsair H110i water cooler into the Commander Pro, and this really puts the wind in my sails, because normally I'd use one USB header for my cooler and the other for the Node Pro, effectively leaving me with zero remaining headers. With Corsair's new controller, I still have one header left on the motherboard as well as an open port on the Commander. These can be used for things like some of Corsair's power supplies and another Node Pro, because why not? And the last thing to talk about is pretty hot for you geeks. It doesn't do much in terms of actual functionality, but the temperature sensors are good for giving you extra information if you want it. Corsair doesn't recommend placing them directly on your more aggressive components like your GPU or CPU, but Link will read the integrated temperature sensors for you anyway. I use my four sensors for front intake, power supply intake, top intake, and my GPU exhaust if you want an idea for where to start. Now let's dive into the Link software. The Commander Pro is officially supported in Corsair Link 4.7. To get this, go to Corsair's site, click on support, then download, scroll down a bit, click load more, 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 scroll down a bit, click load more. Aha! Corsair, why? If you've ever installed anything before, this process shouldn't be surprising. If you haven't, then what are you doing opening up a computer? After install, go ahead and update any firmware you can by going to Options, Devices, and check for updates. In my Lighting Node Pro video, I said updating firmware could break your fans. That's fixed now. Mostly. The Lighting Node Pro doesn't currently play well with the SP120 RGB fans. You might get a weird flickering whenever you try any effect, but the fans work perfectly fine when connected to the Commander. Walking towards the light, the new Corsair Link almost completely addresses one of my initial criticisms. The HD RGB fans used to have two sets of effects, one when using the Lighting Node Pro, and one when using the included physical controller. First, add your lighting components by selecting the appropriate drop-down option next to its respective channel, and click the plus button to add the applicable number of links. Link 4.7 gives your HD RGB fans and Lighting Node Pro LED strips access to Rainbow Wave, Rainbow, Color Shift, Color Pulse, Color Wave, Static, Temperature, Visor, Marquee, Strobing, and Sequential. The SP RGB fans can shine up to you with Rainbow, Color Shift, Color Pulse, Static, Temperature, Strobing, and Sequential Effects. The sequential effect is determined by the order you've plugged your components in. In the case of these fans, the order is dictated by the numbers on the lighting hub. You can set the effect for each individual LED strip or fan, or you can copy the effect to other LED devices to save yourself time. 
You still miss a couple of effects from the physical controller like demo and flicker modes, but this blows the initial impression out of the water. Speaking of blowing, the Corsair Commander Pro is a pretty hot fan controller, and by hot I mean not. You have total access over your fan curves ranging from 0 to 100%. Within the Configure tab, find one of your fans connected to the Commander Pro and click it. From there, you can select from a number of fairly self-explanatory preset curves. Balanced, performance, and quiet modes cannot be edited, but they're a good place to start. And if you want to take control like a real commander, custom mode will do you some justice. Selecting a certain group will make the fan a slave to that group's respective temperature. For example, you can have your fans ramp up based on the CPU package, the GPU, or even something obscure like your SSD. If you boogie over to the notification tab, you can run certain actions when your temperature reaches a designated value. Let's say your RAM hit 900 degrees Celsius. You can tell Corsair Link to set all of your LEDs to an ever-alarming red color, set all your fans to 100%, run a file, or even shut down your computer. Pretty useful if you get engrossed in a game and you don't notice your PC catch on fire. And if you've got multiple fans, you don't need to do this each and every time. Back to the Configure tab, you can click on Copy To and give whichever fan you check off the same attributes. So you know how your manager has something that makes him or her just... unpleasant? Unfortunately, our commander is no different. First off, he's fat. You might have difficulties finding a good spot to mount it given its wide footprint. Using the Corsair 570X case, the best location I could think to put it was on the power supply. This introduced a horribly catastrophic flaw in design. I could only get the cables to reach if I flipped it upside down. Given that the USB 2.0 cable from the H110i comes from the top of the case and needs to reach all the way down, I was unable to keep the commander where I wanted it while getting the cable to reach the USB headers at the bottom of the unit. The most common internal USB devices tend to be LED kits like the Corsair Lighting Node Pro or the NZXT Hue Plus, which have flexible mounting options, and AIO water coolers, which do not. I'm no design expert and I'm not sure what kind of issues they would have run into if they were to change it up, but I would have put them on the opposite side of the unit, or perhaps one on each side. And this kind of leads into the next issue, which is somewhat impossible to avoid, at least at this point in time. You had better run a tight ship when it comes to cable management, because this thing's gonna look like a figurative, literal kraken. We wouldn't want you to sink. Like, a boat going under. RGB sinking is okay. The next minor issue is the mounting for the temperature sensors, or the lack thereof. It looks like you're more or less expected to stick the thermal probes in tight places, which is more than okay with me, if you know what I'm saying. But this does make sense. However, I think it would have been nice to see strips of thermal tape included. The last thing to talk about is the price. I'm having a tough time deciding whether or not the 70 US dollar price tag is justified. The product on its own acts as a fan hub, an internal USB 2.0 splitter, and a temperature monitor. The fan hub and the control you get with the Link software is great, but most people don't need thermal sensors for their intakes or exhausts, and most motherboards support at least two internal USB headers, which is typically enough to cover the average user. Since the Commander doesn't come with any RGB-enabled items itself, the remaining functionality relies on purchasing at least some of the Corsair RGB ecosystem. Otherwise, I don't really think the device justifies the cost. Additionally, if you've purchased the Lighting Note Pro, the Commander kind of eliminates the need to use the device itself. But, if you have their RGB fans, the Commander does not replace that lighting hub. So, if you intend on using the extra features, which may or may not be valuable to you, you're really not saving space either. In my opinion, I think it would be totally worth the money if they included at least two RGB LED strips and an extension cable or two. This way, you can purchase the Commander Pro and get to use a little bit of everything. And plus, those two RGB strips can double as a gateway drug for more RGB. Hey Corsair! So if you're in need of a fan hub and you're desperately starving for more internal USB headers and you think monitoring your intakes and exhausts is pretty cool, and you like the idea of grouping all your Corsair RGB fans in LED strips, this thing will check all of the above. However, if you're not blown away by the fan hub and the extra features aren't really doing it for you, I'd maybe wait for the next one, whatever that may be. The Corsair Commander Pro 8K RGB VR Tempered Glass Special Torque Edition is ridiculous as it sounds, I'd probably still buy it. So that's all I have to say about that. Like, dislike, comment, subscribe, share, leave me questions if you've got them. Thanks for watching. My name is Steven, and I am a little dim. Bye bye. Considering what that was. Ow! F Why did I put a heatsink there? That was a terrible idea. If Corsair components compose. Com compo Not saying it this time. I'm gonna pretend it didn't happen. Then I'm about to introduce you to the com ca ca captain, because marketing words like to ruin my rambunctious rhymes. I mean, they were kind of already ruined to begin with, but I like them. So just plug in what you'll use, you'll, you'll, you'll use, you'll, you'll, you'll.
use. You will use. You'll use. Easy. Just plug in what you'll you'll you, you'll use. I said it was easy literally less than three seconds ago and uh, man. Dock into the ports. Get it? I'm probably more proud of that one than I should be. Walking towards the light, the new Corsair Link almost completely addresses one of my initial criticisms. The HDB R HDB? I skipped the RG and then went straight to B. I rushed B. <laughs> I didn't even play that game. <laughs> Pretty useful if you get engrossed in a game and you don't notice your PC set on fire. Pretty useful if you get engrossed in a game and you don't notice your... What am I doing with that? So you know how every boss... I say... Okay, see, now... When I wrote this out, I said boss with the intention of manager. Now that I read it out loud, I keep thinking of like a boss fight in a game and now it doesn't make sense anymore. First off, he's fat. <laughs> and you think monitoring your intakes and exhausts is uh, pretty cool. Mumble mumble words. 